Has any of your characters ever been traumatised by the story events? How did they deal with it? Trauma. Don't have time to be affected by trauma when the trauma never stops. <laughs> Honestly, I think, yeah, you can just end the thread here. Like, um, yeah. th- that's pretty spot on, if I'll be honest with you. Yeah. I couldn't imagine... Can you imagine just being, like, you know, a standard adventurer just for five minutes? IRL. Like, IRL. Like, you know, I'm sorry, but your head's going to be scrapped <laughs> yes. by the end of the first week. Yes. Guys, I'm sorry. My character was bullied out of the party for his PTSD, so I made a new one while the old one presumably drank himself to death. He was never, ever mentioned again. That's pretty sad. Aww. <laughs> That's pretty sad, to be honest with you. Warhammer fantasy roleplay. Character is an ex-noble who left his on-the-brink-of-bankruptcy family to seek glory on war for his family. Didn't work that well. Ashamed he spent years being a street thug and living by doing shady gigs. He has abandoned his old identity in denial. Several sessions later, there's a note of a haunted house in the outskirts of Altdorf. His old family house. Fuck GM, what the fuck are you going for? It appears that after he left, the desperate family tried to make a deal with ruinous forces, only to be fucked over by Zeech. Has to kill his brother because he turned into a bird-like abomination, then ghosts of his remaining family. Loses a leg to the ghost. Tells rest of the party to leave. Last seen by the party limping away from now burning household. Sessions on hiatus as we got burned out and decided to play something else for a while. That's pretty good. That's I like g- that. That's a good GM who knows how to use a backstory. Yeah, that's I, I very like that. Good. I, I like that. It's nice to see characters. Mm-hmm. A lot of the time, backstory just kind of gets dumped. It's yeah. Like, oh, by the way, yeah, I they're did never that. really talked about yeah. after like the first session. Yeah, I kind of like the way the they like weave that. that in to yeah. the story. That's that's pretty cool. That and also, guys, just don't make deals with fucking chaos gods, like, ever. Like, yeah. never. Just, like, you know, if anyone, if you're ever op- op- offered the opportunity, just say, don't. no. <laughs> it, this feels like, you know what, I remember them old ones for, like, drugs and stuff back in, like, the 90s. Yes. Uh, say, say, no <laughs> say no to, to chaos gods, kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's exactly what it is. Finally get a girlfriend after decades of being unable to find anyone to love. Oh, playfully try to impress them. Die or get KO'd every fight for the next three months in-game. Gets a Tarask kill steal after throwing his sword in frustration for being a useless party member that's unable to do anything right. Campion ends. My head canon is that post campaign he copes with his crippling insecurities by going to other party members and recruited NPCs to help them through their own issues of insecurity, vulnerability, or at the very least, work past the experience of watching a human being dismembered by mimics or put through a giant serrated deli slicer. Seeing as how he's the one that both of those things happen to. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, well I like that he, I like that they've put some thought into what happened after the yeah. campaign ended, you know, that's always nice. Several. Usually they dealt with it by talking about their feelings during downtime. All YA modern cartoon style. One relied on a good luck charm that game wise did nothing, but in story made my PC feel better when they had it. Though they would slowly lose their shit. Hit, hit, Higrashi <laughs> style when separated from it. Look, guys, we're like, not, we don't we, need to explain. Like, we, we, like, you guys know us at this point. We're, we, we're not good when it comes to the Japanese. One would just lay with sex workers and fall asleep in their arms to feel safe and comforted during downtime. God. <laughs> That reminds me of, you know, that uh, on the topic of Japan, that reminds me of, you know, them the cuddle, cuddlers. You know, them yes, cuddle cafes. Where, was that on Vice? Yeah. Or something back, we watched? Back, back when, back when Vice was fucking... Let's not talk about them, you know. <laughs> oh. Wouldn't have sex with them. Wouldn't talk to them. He just wanted someone warm with a heartbeat to sleep with for a few hours to de-stress and not to feel so cold, scared and alone. And one got really OCD by checking over climbing gear and ropes before every trip to a location where such tools would be needed. Ever since a bad roll in a climbing check nearly turned into a TPK and did indeed kill several PCs. Later on, even spent quite a bit of gold on Featherfall and flight scrolls as backups for if things went wrong. Honestly, I relate to that last one, but too I much. To it. <laughs> I feel like um, I'm, I feel like I'm personally being victimized here. I relate to um, it. I, I, if it happened to me once, I, I'm gonna fucking make sure it doesn't happen to me yeah, again. Like honestly, like we we finished uh, Tomb of Horror not that long ago. We uh, only finished it. We only finished. Well, no, it no, been, no. Been we only finished it because we took ten foot po- ten foot poles. Yeah, us ten foot poles. We did ver- we did very well though. I think only only one death, and the one death was avoidable. Or the, no, actually, no. That's not like Kai's. Kai's yeah, died in the poison pits in the first yeah. like 
five minutes of the session. Take a ten foot, fo- ten like foot, ten foot poles. Wing. Always take them. You mm. never know when you're going to mm-hmm. need them, guys. My divine sorcerer was pretty traumatized when he was latched onto by a magical parasite. Had his call to God via magic ignored, and half his party kidnapped by mind flayers in the same week. After spending that Friday night staring at the loading gun on his lap, he met an old gin friend who dropped off some hot new gear for who was left at the party. Hired some mercenaries to help save his friends. Hired them again to take the bomb he was geased into delivering. To the dark city of undead it was addressed too. Meeting God in a dream. Getting laid and romancing the magical parasite. That's pretty good revenge. I like that. Yeah, it is. Honest to God, like you know, I do think mind flares, They are particularly like you know. Okay, if they were, if they existed in real life, I think they would be particularly nasty things to come across. You know, the whole psionic powers, mind yeah. eating. You know, they they really are nightmare fuel, and they live in the dark. And, you know, ugh, fuck that. I'm oh, not. Like, don't. I don't want to. I don't want to live in a world where actual mind flares exist, guys. Okay. Yeah. What would your choice be? If there was one fantasy race that existed, what would be the worst one? Play Beholders. Beholders yeah. or Mind Flayers, I think, are pretty yeah. top tier for pretty much fucking us up. But what would be the best ones? No, no, guys, guys, I, I know what you guys... No, don't. <laughs> Lizard Teddies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Not World War One setting with magic. Think Valkyria Chronicles, but low fantasy. Be me. High fantasy. <laughs> no one gets it. No one gets it. it. No one ever gets it. My dude is a foreign merchant. Travels to the good guy nations to deliver supplies. Most of the trip is fairly standard Oregon Trail shit. But we can take it because we're pros at this shit. Once we get into esoteric sun magic wielding Nazi territory, things get dicey. <laughs> of course. <laughs> that sounds like Indiana Jones to me. Yeah. That's, I, I, honestly, that really does just sound like Indiana Jones. As we cross a mountain, they surrounded our wagon to steal our supplies. My dude hears his dad exchange some words with them in their language, and they unexpectedly open fire. First family member down. My dude runs up the mountain with his little sister and hides in some dead dude's cabin to wait the rest of the winter out. And they celebrate their birthday and shit in the cabin. You know, normal family stuff. When winter starts to close out, and they're planning to hike down the mountain, soldiers who are supposed to be the good guys find the cabin in the woods and instantly aggro. Maybe. They're on edge from a battle or whatever. My dude doesn't speak their language, so he can't figure out what they want. His sister comes out of the cabin and panics, and her sudden movement causes the soldiers to open fire on her. He goes into a fit of retard rage and slaughters them all, but not without being turned into Swiss cheese by bullets. Makes a miraculous recovery and goes psychopath mode to cope with the loss. Truth is, the beast was always inside of him though. Why Why the winky face? We were supposed to make characters who had already seen the horrors of World War Gollum Earth Jews versus Sun Nazis, who had a reason to fight. Well, didn't he see World War One? Yeah, so, well, look, you know, it, 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 it's, it's Does not it all World just War I. Yeah, like, I, I'm going to imagine it's just one big mashup of yeah. the Great Wars put together. But I, I, I'm a big sucker for anything World War World I. War I, yeah. Oh, it's ridiculous. I'm, I'm particularly bad for it, guys. But, you know, that actually really does remind me of... Have any of you guys seen the movie Hannibal Rising? It was, like, 2006, 7, 8, round about. And uh, it was, like, early years of Hannibal Lecter. Mm-hmm. It was actually quite interesting. Like, you know, the whole idea was... Like the uh, trauma he went yeah, through. Yeah, yeah. And, like, you know, they... they why, and why, how he well, became it, a... It all came about was, was because it was, like, um, Russian soldiers end up occupying their house. Yeah. They live there in the winter. And then they oh. end up... I think they ed his sister... Or something like that. It was actually yes. pretty, it was actually pretty good. I remember it vaguely. vaguely. Yeah, it used to be on TV all the time, yeah. like years ago, back whenever people actually watched Watch TV. TV. Normal TV. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, do you like models in your tabletop role playing games? Cause we do too. Do you like having big bitty waifus on your table? Cause we do too. <laughs> <laughs> we got human bitties. We got lizard bitties. We got orc bitties. Oni bitties, cat bussies. We've got everything you want at neckbeardia.co.uk. <laughs> Check the links down below. It helps us out a lot. Sorry for interrupting the video. Let's get on the story. Be a little girl. Born into a commie horror country. That is basically USSR caricature with all the bad part. Anytime I see USSR, I think of Soviet Russia. 
And whenever I think of Soviet Russia, I think of your mom. Bold he's and a vlogger. Bankrupt. Yeah, bald and yeah, bankrupt. He's actually pretty good. He's he, so good, but I, it's I, like I, this Soviet chair, this Soviet <laughs> tree, this Soviet building, this Soviet line. It's everything he's, Soviet. He, he's pretty good. Like, also, I'm going really not into vloggers. Neither I, am I, I, I but he is very good. But he's good. actually enjoyable. Yeah, but he's the type of person that if you max your charisma to 20, because he walks into like random I know, he just little like <laughs> babushka women's houses and they like cook for him and make him food and he just sits and talks to them and then he moves to the next town and goes into the other house. He's so good. It's, it's really bizarre to watch, but let's keep going with this. Okay, so uh, born in the Akami horror country that is basically USSR caricature with all the bad parts. Gulag for you. <laughs> Super mad scientist comes and wipes the fuck out of your town. Becomes a baker in another town with no family or friends because they're all dead. Whole town gets gulagged because the head of state had a brain fart. That's that's not even make believe. That's that's just yes, that's our. Let's be serious. Why does it? Why does it? Why is it so grim all the time? Escape from fucking gulag and become an anarcho terrorist. Spends years trying to topple the regime through bombings and killings of officials, but without result. That's just more times getting the gulag treatment, I'm sorry. <laughs> Literal demon comes grinning and proposes to help. Mm. What's worse, communists or little demons from hell? Communists. <laughs> <laughs> but before he could even use his help, some fucking alien from space takes over the country with mechas and orbital strikes. America? <laughs> this is supposed to be like an America. Like, okay, so, okay, so if we do, America's got the reptilians, and uh, <laughs> we'll say USR is controlled by demons. Would that work? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. Let's go with that. Reptilians versus demons. Rage and almost succumb to drinking yourself into a stupor. I've got you gushing again. <laughs> the deal with the demon is still good though, so try to use that. Die in fucking napalm when my girl Terminator pelts the demon with missiles. Get fucking resurrected while feeling everything you felt while dying, only backwards. Demon is dead, and the deal is no more. But surprisingly, the alien that took over the country decides to use you for some administrative work, because he probably doesn't see you as a threat. Actually, the alien is a pretty decent guy, even with some personal problems. Maybe everything will not be bad. Alien fucking dies. Evil alien clone descends on the capital while commencing orbital strikes. Die bisected by laser axe. Nope, you're fucking immortal. The demon actually did as part of the bargain as best he could, so you literally can't die now, until you succeed in making this world better. I like to think that that actually... Um, Good fucking <laughs> luck trying to make Russia better. <laughs> I, know. I like to imagine that this is official gore. Not official gore, this is official history, sorry. This is actually what happened. <laughs> it's like the history from uh, Inglorious Bastards. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, it's like, I, I, I like to imagine this is a Quentin Tarantino <laughs> yeah. redo of what actually happened <laughs> in the Cold War. This is what... Yes. No, this is the, the, well, you know what's happening? This is the Call of Duty treatment. <laughs> This yeah. Is, yeah, Mason, the numbers! The numbers, <laughs> Mason, the numbers! <laughs> oh boy. So my last major campaign just wrapped up. And to sum the keynotes up, my paladin of Abadar got not just his immediate family, but his entire caravan community scattered all across the world, resulting in two deaths and shit living conditions for all of them. One of the only two family members that stayed with him, a younger brother, was killed by a false hydra. His estranged ex-girlfriend had become shipwrecked on an island, forced to eat her other soldiers, and developed cannibalism from it. His mother, who he thought had died ten years before the start of the campaign, was resurrected and used to help fulfil the Beelzebub cult prophecy. Said prophecy is that my Pali would, in essence, get possessed and become the Antichrist. As it turns out, Abadar had forsaken him and stopped fueling his powers. Beelzebub took over and fed him info to save his mother, cutting off his powers during their first ambush. Over the course of the campaign, his teammates, i.e. the other players, have ridiculed him and me, both in and out of character for my fuck-ups. They also were paid by an assassin group to kill his mother, and made it blatantly known that they were going to kill her regardless. The fucking king in yellow has quoted, taking an interest in me. That is literally half of it. And that was enough to make him have as much less carefree attitude towards life. 
to put it mildly. I quite like that. I think that's like a good intro or like you know a good setup for like you know a multi-class yeah. paladin hex blade. Yeah. Like that would work very well for hex blade. So yeah. it would, I think I think that could. It's very you know, interesting. I think I like, like you know it. maybe if you like two levels in paladin less than hex blade maybe mm-hmm. something like that. I think that would be mm-hmm. pretty cool. Well, why don't we go through the fucking list, huh? Witnessed another party member vivisect someone alive. Was complicit in having a banshee kill someone else. Could only watch as most of the party turned to keep doing fucked up deeds like necromancy. Turned to alcohol as a coping mechanism. Kept fucking up heists and got herself into trouble with the thieves guild through bad luck. Was involved in a violent train accident. Got forced into a day's worth of slavery. I'm... Hi. (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) Saw one party member die and one get kidnapped while being too scared to stop it. That put so much stress on her, it awakened her sorcerer bloodline. Okay. Fell out hard with some of the party. Thought she was trapped 30 odd years in the future or past. What do you mean thought? I, I have no idea. Keep going. Let's, let's just keep going. Found out that actually she was trapped in a cursed land. There we go. All there right. we go. That explains it. Met someone she started dating only for them to be kidnapped. Forced into blackmail there. Had to confront the fact that another party member died and was resurrected. Opening up that old wound. Found out her love interest had been turned into a vampire spawn. Did I miss anything? That's pretty grim. I'll That's be honest pretty with you. Grim. Um, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty hard time. But then again, I suppose whenever you actually think about it. All you needed was to make it even grimmer. Was that you were fucked in the gulag. Yeah, just like if you want to make anything more grim dark, just add an av- extra level of yeah, or just say that it's Stalinism. or just say that it took place in Russia yeah <laughs> sometime <laughs> in the 20th century it's it, like, it's pretty bad yeah some it, it, some bad shit happened you know I, I would say like you know the more that I think about it the more the average player character is gonna have like, some form of extreme PTSD or trauma yeah. and I think like you know a lot of players I, I'm pretty bad for it like you know I just try not to think about it too much yeah. from a character perspective yeah um so the last character that I played forgetting like the time was a paladin and i suppose he could always fall back on like you know the old idea it's like God, oh well my no, faith no. protects me you know and you all work goblin it, and goblins are ruthless uh, yeah, they don't give a fuck i honestly couldn't give less of a fuck yeah. like you know okay he's, qu- he's quite partial to yeah. making money and whatnot they were but, killing like, their fucking brothers and sisters for a piece of fucking bread whenever they were younger <laughs> yeah exactly so he's not the most yeah not the most, what would be the right word? Thoughtful? Kerrigan? Yeah. Self-centered? No, it is it's self-centered. Ju- it's just a fucking rogue, let's be serious. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, rogues are just like that. <laughs> Some rogues can be, but... Meh. What about you? Let us know down below if you're a character. Well, what's the worst person? thing that's happened to your character? Or give yeah. me, actually, you know what? Give me a good death. Well, like, you know, have, oh, you yeah. ever, have you ever just been turned into like jam? Yeah. Like, you know, did you ever just get, like, you know, like a nasty car crash? Is he, have, has anything Chunky ever happened? Salsa, let us oh, know. Oh, yeah. Have you, has, like, anything that was on Rotten.com back in, like, the early <laughs> 2000s, if your character turned into it's anything... Fucking Rotten.com, <laughs> yeah. I think I blocked that from my mind. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember? Oh, the worst one was, uh, I remember there was one of a fella, and he got his head chopped off by a helicopter blade. It was, ugh, it was well, horrible. No. Oh, so he pretty much... Has your character ever achieved anything that could be close to being put on Rotten.com? <laughs> and uh, I don't want to know if you put a jam jar up your ass or anything. <laughs> you know? But uh, I suppose we'll end it here. Yeah, we'll end um, it here. Check out the links. Go to the website. Check out the models. Have a, um, uh, you know, subscribe. Yeah. Hit all subscribe. That. Hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we post. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.